Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Seth and welcome back to another video for Conan Exiles once again on the Isle of Sipta. And in my previous videos, I showed you how to get the weapon recipes and the armor recipes. I showed you the armor stats from the Delvin Bench. And in this video, I'm going to show you the weapon stats. Uh, we've got the normal weapon, the level 60 epic uh, weapons and the flawless versions of the weapons which you can get by having a tier 4 crafter now I have two vaults full of the stuff so this might mean it's gonna be a slightly longer video but I'm gonna go through every single weapon that you can get from the Delvin bench I'm gonna start off with the recipe we're gonna look through the various weapons and stats and uh, yeah just bear with me there's a lot to show here. Uh, of course, this is an informative video, and I've already started, so feel free to pause the video at any given time. Um, this is a video so that hopefully uh, can help you guys decide what recipe you want to farm for. There are some really good recipes. Uh, of course, it does help having a tier 4 thrall to craft the flawless versions of them. And uh, if you want to find out how to get the recipes, go and check out my other video. So, as you can see, my vault, or vault number one, is full to the brim with these weapons. First, uh, well, actually, well, not first, I've already started. Uh, I do want to get cracking with this stuff because there's a lot to show. So, we're on the Sword of the Legion right here. And uh, as you can see, then we have the level 60 version of it, and then the two flawless version so that would be the normal and the epic we're on the lion slayer so some of them have bonus stats others don't and uh, they do look just like the icons i am not going to equip them and show you them on my character otherwise this would make the video much longer i am trying to keep it short and informative so i'm trying to go through these as quick as possible uh, so we're now on the flawless transference and this is heated as a bonus and this is the hearth blade right there now you saw at the beginning that uh, some of them look different so there's a difference between the way they look in the icon and that's how they look in uh, real life when you equip them on your character they are the same weapon that just have different skins and most of these weapons much like the armors are just reused assets however i like what they've done here because you can get uh legendary weapons that you can craft with some really nice stats so this one is a corruptor the flawless uh spear right there we've got spire so that's the recipe and then we have flawless spire bonus to all attributes metal eater so this one is acidic and as you can see the flawless version of the epic does do some damage i do like the way it scales up this one is variable in terms of stats and it has of course reach it is a spear we've got anger pike anger spike so bonus accuracy, this kind of makes no sense on a weapon like this. It would make more sense on a bow. But once again, I said I'd show you the stats so you guys can make your own choice as to what recipe you want to go for. This one is Corruption Affinity for the Depraved Spear. And over here we have Hunter's Spear. So we've got Bonus Survival, a good stat to have on that. Bitter Bite, and this is Envenomed, Envenomed, uh, my English at this point in time, not that great, I did come from a long shift at work, this is bonus strength right here on the Reach of the Warrior, so I guess getting your tier 4 crafter for weapons will be well worth it, you can see how important it is in terms of the weapon stats and values that you get so bonus accuracy on eye piercer these are the bows 
once upon a string and this is pretty much nothing but I do like the fact that you can craft your own legendary weapons that's pretty cool uh, twice upon an arrow shoots twice or twice yeah, shoots twice, but as you can see, the damage isn't all that great. However, it is useful for things such as snake arrows. I like that. You can see the difference in damage. And we now have the oak. And this is durable. Has a lot of durability on it. Alright. Nothing too important with String of the Legion. So I'm going to show you the recipe as well. I did spawn all of these in and it took a long, long time to arrange them and sort them out in the vault. So bonus to all attributes on flawless or on the masterful bow. And long shot is bonus accuracy. So this makes plenty of sense. Accuracy is a stat that you want to have for a archery build. And we have Huntress. As you can see, this is how it scales up. Next up, we are on the Warhammers. And this is the Warhammer of the Legion. And the bonus is variable. And it does, of course, have Sunder as well on it. This one has bonus agility. So this is the Swift Blow. Massacre, bonus to all attributes. And the flawless version does have some nice damage on it. So headache, and apparently it has a headache. I'm guessing that will be a nice debuff to try out and play around with. I'm not sure what it's best for, if it's best for players or NPCs. Uh, fever and... This is bonus vitality. This one's durable for the Despicable Maul. This is a pretty good looking maul, if I'm honest. We're now on the Thrashing Maul. And as you can see, no bonus right there. Warlord's Hammer is durable. However, the damage doesn't scale up that nicely. It makes no sense right there. So if we compare it to that, you can see damage-wise, it's not really that great. Tundra. And this one has bonus Frostbite on it. Once again, on the Flawless version, really good damage. We have Harm. And bonus agility as the bonus. So this is a two-handed. This is the one-handed version. Just kind of point that out. On the surprise blow, just shield smash and nothing else in terms of bonuses. Damage is okay. On inheritance, again, nothing special on the bonus. And the damage is 1 all across. I'm not sure if this is an, uh, an error or what's going on there. I haven't tested these weapons out, if I'm honest. But I will play around with them when I do get a chance. Universal Mace. And we get Stamina Damage as the bonus. So this would be a good PvP weapon. I mean, if your opponent can't hit you because they've got no stamina, you have a good advantage over them. Gravebane. Uh, it has Undead Bane on the bonus ability. And there we go. I don't know what Undead Bane does. I haven't played with that stat, that attribute, that bonus. Uh, stamina damage again on the Headcracker. So just having a look at the other ones, comparing them to the other ones. This is a good looking mace. Scepter of the Unclean. It's a Corruptor. Another good PvP weapon. 
if you can reduce your opponent's health bar and stamina that's kind of useful bonus encumbrance on strange mace next up we are on the swords so this is wild swing And then we have Draining Will, which is, of course, kind of like what the title suggests. That's the recipe right there. And it does drain the stamina. So that's pretty good. Great Sword of the Legion. This is variable in terms of the bonus. Barbaric Great Sword. No bonus on this weapon. And we're now on Frenzied Edge. So we've got bonus agility. And then we have the Corroding Sword, which is Acidic. So another nice stat or bonus to play with, if I'm honest. Okay, we've got Mercenary. Bonus to all attributes. So that is its bonus. This one's durable, so this is Flesh Eater, and it does have a great deal of durability, as you can see. Over here we have Nightlight. Uh, bonus is Undead Bane. And we have reached the end of this vault. Fever, and this is Heated. Another good ability to have, another good bonus. And as you saw there, the damage on them was pretty nice as well. So they were two-handed weapons, by the way. Next up, we have the axes. These are the one-handed axes. And this is the War Axe of the Legion. I feel like this should have a bonus there. Maybe corruption. But it doesn't. The Annoying Shard. And this is Gaijin. Gau yeah, Gaujing. So that's the bonus on that. And then we have Song of Iron. This is durable. And it does have a good amount of durability, by the way. We have Rhyme. And this one has the chilling bonus. Again, I think the flawless versions have really good damage on them. Death to Trees. And this one has Harvesting as bonus. Uh, this is something I've not played with. I'm not quite sure what it does. I'm guessing it will harvest whatever you kill, which is potentially good. Survivor's Axe. Uh, bonus survival on this one. And uh, this is actually a weapon that looks quite nice as well. Well, Forged Axe. This one, again, is durable. I'm um, just having a look at the durability. It's not going up, so I feel like there's a mistake there, but hey-ho. And this one is Revealed Truth, bonus to all attributes. As you can see, it's very similar in durability with the one above before it. Uh, so we've got now the Rushing Edge, so bonus agility on that one. They tend to have the exact same type of stats uh, at, the set, you know, at the level. So the simple one has the same stats all across the board. Now we're on to the daggers. Uh, and the same thing kind of tends to apply to the flawless epic versions of the weapons, which I like. It, it's easy to follow. Bonus to all attributes on that one. And daggers of the warsmith are durable. So vein cut and uh, the daggers of the warsmith. So different in durability. Daggers of the legion. Again, the bonus is variable here. Slayer's Blades, no bonus. Of course, daggers will do bleed. Heart Freezer, and this has the Frostbite bonus. And once we finish with daggers, we move into the more expensive weapons. Expensive in terms of delving them. They do cost a lot to craft, and uh, it's up to you to decide if you want to do them. Then this is why I'm making this video. This is to help you guys try and decide. So there you go. There's a difference right there between those. And then we have the draining knives. Once again, 
stamina damage very useful on top of bleed which the daggers i already have acidic knives so this one is acidic another good bonus to have on top of the bleed we're just looking at the various damage stats and then we have blunt daggers and finally we have the balancing daggers this one has the cleansing bonus so from this point forward these are the two-handed axes uh they are very difficult to get it requires star metal uh, uh two-handed axes to delve they're very expensive to delve it's up to you to decide if you want to go for these I'm just going to show you the stats and the bonuses that they have, uh, especially once they've been crafted. There are some good weapons to have here, but I think they're far too expensive to get. And uh, the previous ones, you could just use the hardened steel stuff to delve to get the recipes. As for crafting them, some of them may require star metal, so it's up to you. With these, you need star metal to delve them, and I delved 150 of these to get all of the recipes. Now, probably overdone, I didn't know what I was getting, so I just used four delving benches. Uh, I put one of each weapon type, well, one of each weapon type, of well, I mean, it's basically 150 of each, uh, of one of the weapon types. That was difficult, Jesus and delved 150 two-handed star metal axes in one delving bench then 150 katanas in one of the delving benches and then 150 short swords in a delving bench all of them very expensive they were star metal weapons to get all the recipes so just to kind of let you know what you'd have to invest to get the weapons that you now see or the recipes for the weapons as you can imagine some of them will of course cost a lot of resources including star metal we're now on the katanas uh this is actually a good place to be i like some of these weapons so this one has berserk berserking on it jesus christ that is of course the razor shard and venom coated blade so this has bleed and is also envenomed so a good combination of debuffs right there uh again bleed and cripple another good combination of debuffs especially for pvp shines like silver and this one of course is a bonus strength weapon plus bleed so good to go you know corruption affinity on top of bleed for the wicked edge recipes right there just trying to be careful not to jump any of them uh curved blade of the legion variable bonus on this one so that is the bonus that it gets enraged sword is instigator and bleed i'm not quite sure what this one does so this is something i'd like to play around with potentially a weapon that helps hold aggro which is not really what i'm after but hey ho might be good for thralls cooling on cold heart on top of bleed again another good combination of debuffs gouging blade and uh yeah so as you saw in the katana section there's quite a few Interesting weapons going on. Guardsman Sword. Alright. So nothing there on the bonuses. Bad Karma. This one's got a cleansing bonus. Gladius. So Venom Drenched Gladius. Of course, as the title suggests, it is Envenomed. So, good debuff. Short Sword of the Legion. Once again, the bonus on this is variable. Titan's Fingernail. Bonus Strength. 
This is potentially a sword that looks nice. So, Sword of the Reaver, bonus to all attributes. This is something that would go nice with an armor set that offers that. Penetrator, no bonus here. And as you can see, damage not that great either. Corruptor of Souls, once again, as the title suggests, it is corrupted. Bane of the Dead. Undead Bane is the bonus on this one, and we have one more weapon to go through. And that is Leg Slicer, and no bonus there, apart from the cripple that it comes with. That's pretty much it for the weapons, there was a lot to go through. I hope that this video helps you guys decide what you want to aim for in terms of the recipes that you can get from the delving bench. I do have a full video for that, so if you want to know what you need to delve to get these weapons, go and check that out as I do cover all of the weapons and what you need to delve for each individual recipe. With that being said and done, I do hope that you have enjoyed this video and found it useful and informative. If you have, please don't forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already for more similar content from myself. And if you have just subscribed, why not check out some of my other videos and guides here on this channel. Who knows, you might just enjoy them. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you guys get notified when I upload new videos and content to the channel. Also, for those interested, you can always find me on the Sethtopia Discord. Links to this, of course, you can find down below in the video's description, as well as in a pinned comment from myself. Until next time, stay safe, folks.